So hi, I'm Leon Taylor, Olympic medalist in diving, keen cyclist and yoga teacher. This is the second uh, video where I'm going to share with you, as part of support for Head for Change, my uh, warm down routine. So I've just been out for a quick blast on the bike and I'll take you through the most important stretches, in my opinion, to do as soon as you get off the bike. All right, so I always kick my shoes off just to try and get a bit of space. My feet always get uncomfortable in the cycling shoes. And then like we did in the warm up, we just need to stretch across the chest. So hands on the lower back, squeeze elbows together, and then just spend a bit of time pushing the hips forwards and opening up into the chest. Maybe you can stretch through into the throat. And we're gonna hold a little bit longer now. This warm down takes a little bit longer than the warm up, but we've been on the bike. So we just need to unwind what we've been doing. Stay here a few more breaths in this position. And then let that go. And then we're coming into a side stretch. So feet hip distance apart, reach the arms up towards the sky, grab hold of one of your wrists and then push the hips out to the side. So we're really stretching into the ribs. So I always find this really helps open up after being hunched in the saddle, whether on the turbo or out on the bike, outside. Come back up, swap sides and then over this way. Try not to hold your breath, try and keep the breath going. That just lets the body ease a little bit more. Good, so that's the upper body. And then those quads get such a hammering, of course. So if you need to balance on something, go ahead and do that. Pull the heel towards your glute. When you find the end of range, just hold here. Then you can gently kick the foot back into the hand. So you activate into the quads, ease the kick and then pull the heel a little closer in towards your glutes. And then switch, so shake that leg out and then go at the other side. So knees in line with each other, pulling the heel towards the glute. Then gently kick the foot back into the hand so you activate into the quads. Ease the kicking into the hand and see if you can pull the heel further in. And then release. Good, okay, we're gonna make, make our way down to the ground, back into that upside down V position, downward facing dog. See if you can bend the knees and get your hips a little bit higher. Then I wanna stretch into those calves. So bend one knee and drop the heel down to the ground. That might be enough to feel a stretch into the calf and the Achilles. If it isn't, then you can drift the shoulders forwards to change the angle so you can stretch in. You can obviously do this against the wall, but as the ground is here, you can always head down there, switch sides. So uh, opposite heel, opposite knee, obviously. See if you can feel a stretch in the belly of the calf and then into the Achilles. All right, now we did the warm up. We're gonna go into those groins, but we're gonna wait. So bring the foot forwards towards the hand, help it if you need to. Carefully lower the back knee and then stay here. If you've got more range, you can go down onto your forearms. Just taking a moment, maybe rocking side to side here. You can always stay up on the toes, but putting the back knee down just gives a little bit more of a relaxation into the hips. And then we'd swap, sharp, swap, <laughs> swap sides. So step back to where you started. Shake it out if you need to. Left foot forwards, outside the left hand. Help it if you need to. Drop the other back knee and then rocking side to side. This is really simple, There's a few more minutes here and then you'll be done. All right, get out of that, stepping back and then come and sit down and we just need to get into those glutes a little bit more. So lying down on the ground, knees bent, feet on the floor, right outside blade of right foot on the left thigh and then gently push the right knee away with the right hand. That might be enough. If you need a bit more, you can pick up the left shin, thread your hands through, and then gently work on this figure of four. And again, I like to rock a little bit side to side, just to try and encourage those hips to release a little bit more, releasing tension into the glutes. And then carefully release. So put the left foot down, right foot down, give the legs a shake and do the other side. Outside blade of left foot on the right thigh, gently push the left knee away with the left hand. That might be enough, stay there. 
If not, you want to go a bit further, you can thread through into this figure of four and then again that rock side to side. So try not to hold your breath, finding a way to create a bit of space in this part of the body. Okay, lower right foot down, carefully move left, give the legs a shake. Okay, so we're lying on our back, let's go into a, a twist. And then you can stay on the ground if you like, have a rest. But before we do, shift the hips over to the right and then drop the knees over to the left. And then twist the upper body in the opposite direction. So looking towards the right, knees over to the left. So you're lying on your back, just twisting. That should feel a nice release. Remember not to go into any pain. This isn't a competition. It's just letting your body find a way to ease after the stress of cycling. And then untwist, keep the feet on the ground, and then other side, shift your hip, hips over to the left, drop the knees to the right, and then twist and turn the other way. Find a way to ease into the lower back particularly, so if you need a space between the knees or any other adjustments, just turn in to look towards the left, knees over to the right. Okay, carefully untwist, last bit, just pull the knees into the chest. And give yourself a squeeze, so thighs into the belly. And then if you're done, you're done. Maybe lie down on the ground, have a rest. Recovery shake, hydrate, do all the other things, go for a beer. That's all in, uh, all on the cards. Well done.